and uh, uh, Ni Hao and uh, uh, Bronshu uh, and uh, whatever uh, words that I can speak and um, say hello to everybody and I appreciate your time and attendance. Uh, my name is Yong Nian Le, and I'm the architect of GCC for OpenOla Compiler. And uh, my colleague uh, is Ming Chuan Wu, who is a committer for the GCC Compiler in OpenOla. Both of us come from OpenOla community, and today we will share you um, the GCC Compiler plugin um, for the customized compilation and the development. And uh, today, our session contains uh, four parts. The first one was the introduction, and the second would be how it works. Then follows the several case study and also our future plan. Through this presentation, you can understand who we are and what we do and where we go. And uh, by the way, I just uh, uh, give our framework a name called the Pink which is the short name for the plugin framework for compiler. Although we uh, initiate our activity from GCC compiler, but actually uh, our framework uh, can work for multiple compilers, uh, including GCC and the area VM as well. Okay, um, at the beginning, uh, let me uh, introduce our uh, organization a little bit. And the Open OLAR is kind of the open source operating system uh, for the digital infrastructure. Uh, as our chairman, uh, Mr. Hu, introduced in our uh, the first day keynote, our Open OLAR uh, operating system is part of the project of uh, Open Atom uh, Foundation. And it is very uh, it belongs to the same organization of Open Harmony. Um, but the mission is a little bit different. And for OpenOla, we try to be a base for the digital infrastructure. And uh, same as multiple uh, community as well, our uh, OpenOla community has multiple special interest group, including compiler interest group. And there are many uh, teams inside this group and uh, uh, covers uh, multiple compilers used by OpenOla, uh, including the JDK, GCC, LLVM, and also other compiler technology as well. And the whole team uh, come from uh, different country and uh, on behalf of different company who was interested, who is interested in uh, compiler for their uh, community as well. So you can see um, we actually organized in an uh, inter international uh, wise uh, manner and the work uh, in uh, the work is organized in some transparent and open source uh, kind of way. Then we'll go to the GCC compiler. Uh, you know, as we have uh, multiple groups inside the compiler special interest group, actually there are many teams inside and works for different uh, compilers. Uh, the same as other interest group, we have uh, debate and we have collaborations, and uh, some kind of guys uh, would advocate LRVM, and uh, some guys would uh, promote the value of GCC. And for the GCC, actually, it is the fundamental compiler used by OpenOla, um, which is the uh, compiler, default compiler to generate the binary and the image for the whole uh, community. And for the mission, if we compare our compiler together with the upstream compiler GCC, um, our compiler's mission is trying to provide an ecosystem compatible, easy of use, and the performance uh, leadership on some specific scenarios uh, based on OpenOla, uh, open source community. And uh, we have a team uh, com uh, comes from different uh, company and I'm the architect for the whole team. And uh, uh, our work uh, can uh, last for three years, uh, uh, starting from 19, uh, 2019. And so far, we 
uh, make uh, several contributions. For example, we can improve the performance of uh, spec CPU 2000 int about 15% uh, better than the upstream GCC. At the same time, we provide the one click uh, feedback directed optimization uh, very easily, uh, very easy for use to enable. At the same time, we collaborate with the hardware team to enable some uh, chip silicon uh, for the user. And also, the last but not least is the plugin framework, which uh, we will share you uh, in today's session. So, um, the first thing uh, why we need this uh, idea comes from the, the real problem. Uh, as I remember, there's a gentleman from uh, Dynatrace shared how a project was initiated. Um, the first step is trying to ask questions. So for our why we need to create this project, we ask ourselves at the beginning, um, you know, there are many uh, companies recently uh, work from uh, work for the ARM processor, CPU architecture is very popular. Um, not only the NVIDIA, but also Ampere, and also uh, like Fujito, uh, all of them uh, create the, their processor product based on ARM architecture. At the same time, different uh, cloud service provider will also provide their uh, 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 solution based on ARM processor on the cloud uh, environment, which, is, uh, which can uh, reduce the cost for the customer by 20%. Uh, so the ARM processor is very popular, and the ARM architecture involves very quickly recently. For example, the CMD comes from 128 bits to 258 bits uh, recently. But we won't like the user to develop their code again and again. For example, if they already have some code written in Neon, and uh, we would like to generate the SV instructions directly if they use our compiler. That would, uh, re uh, uh, that would lease the power of the latest uh, CPU architecture, but do, do not create the burden for the developer. This is the purpose uh, of our work, but in the real world, that created some difficulties. For example, uh, we uh, won't like to change the whole architecture and uh, uh, discuss with the upstream, GCC upstream for a long time to make sure the infrastructure or the whole feature turn on. At the same time, user might also have their special version for the GCC, and uh, I don't uh, think or I don't expect they would change to a new compiler just for some specific feature. So this is the way that we would like to do something to help them, but not, do not create several burden for them. At the same time, uh, as I said, in our community, we have two kind of the compiler infrastructure for the C, C++, uh, namely CGCC and the LLVM project. We hope our work do not repeat again and again from this project to another infrastructure. So this uh, is the motivation why we have this idea and uh, uh, it's naturally to have to think about uh, when we come to a uh, compiler plugin. Actually, compiler plugin is not a new concept. Uh, many developers will choose compiler plugin for their own purpose. The compiler plugin can help the user uh, to do some specific work uh, based on the compiler capabilities, but do not need to change the compiler uh, from whole. This is kind of the way for them to shorten the development life cycle and also uh, reduce the efforts of the development. So this is the reason that the compiler plugin is quite popular recently. A lot of vendors like Tools Company will choose compiler plugin for their own purpose. For example, uh, a, let, uh, a very famous tool uh, I listed below is also uh, are all based on compiler plugin, no matter which compiler infrastructure they choose. 
but the compiler plugin works uh, pretty nice, but there are still some challenges so far for us. The first one is repeated building. This is the, 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 the case on the kernel development. Some guys uh, work on the plugin to hardening the capability of kernel to enhance the security capability. But uh, GCC has multiple versions. In this case, uh, the user need to create multiple uh, plugins for multiple GCC versions to make sure that the version can uh, do not uh, create some incompatibility issue. At the same time, not only the compatibility uh, case, but also the logging uh, needs and also the integrity verification. All those common capabilities need to be created for different uh, plugins again and again. So this is the uh, things that we need to think about. We want uh, uh, those kind of efforts to be invested for our team uh, multiple times. At the same time, as I said, we have LLVM, we have also have the GCC, and we also won't repeat the history uh, plugin uh, again. For example, the random struct is very uh, useful plugin which can create some random structure order to to the uh, to the user. But uh, this kind of the plugin was introduced. Uh, in 2017 for the GCC and uh, two years later, those kind of a code uh, will be, uh, was repeated, uh, re rewritten again for the area VM. So we hope that we can have the infrastructure to allow user to write just uh, once and uh, can run multiple compiler infrastructure, which can reduce the, the, the efforts for the user. So that's the come from our infrastructure, our idea of the framework, we call this PINK, which is a plugin framework uh, for the compiler. And at first we are resolved the repeated building, trying to make sure that user need only focus on the uh, plugin logic itself and do not need to care much on the common facilities like logging, like uh, uh, compatibility and also integrity uh, verification. All those uh, feature is very uh, necessary for each plugin for use, but those kind of the efforts do not need to be developed again and again. At the same time, we have two compilers, infrastructure, GCC and LLVM. We only need to write once and run and fit for the different infrastructure at the same time. So this is the first uh, challenge uh, we use uh, our framework to attack or resolve. At the same time, um, we also abstract the common part uh, for the uh, logic uh, of the plugin into uh, I, uh, IR and also API to standardize the interface between the logic of the plugin and also the interface to the compiler. In this way, we only need to provide the different clients for different uh, infrastructure and do not need a user to rewritten, rewrite their logic of plugin again and again. So that's the uh, way we resolve the second uh, challenge for the user. At the same time, uh, we also provide the capability to enhance the uh, common facilities. So far, we think for the user, we need to provide the integrity verification and the compatibility uh, support and also the logging capability. Those are three major things uh, a user choose plugin uh, feel necessary to have. And in the future, the developer might uh, request for more needs uh, for the plugin. For example, they might need to add some debugging capability as well. So these things uh, we can, uh, we think we can improve it step by step through some collaboration on the upstream. And uh, uh, when um, there are more users uh, to this framework of this framework, then we can add more uh, capabilities step by step manner. But uh, you might wondering how we achieve this. 
Uh, so here I will introduce our committer, uh, Ming Chuan Wu, to share you the details how this happened. Thank you. Uh, hola, my name is Wu Ming Chuan, and I am a compiler seek committer for the Open Ola uh, community. So it's my pleasure to introduce the implementation details on my on the Pink. So let's first take a look at the overall design of the Pink. In the previous introduction, introduction by Yong Nian, we know that many developers uh, of compilation, uh, compilation plugins hope to shorten the building and uh, testing times as much as possible. And they are not willing to go into the implementation details of the every compiler, such as JC and LVM. So to this end, our plugin framework helps developers decoupled from the uh, intermediate representation of the specific compiler. Uh, after all, the, and the plugins, the link delivery and uh, verification files are provided to the plugin users. It only needs to uh, develop once and avoiding the repeated development of uh, multiple uh, compilers. And the users use the plugin files as the plugin server to communicate it with the uh, client uh, of each compiler to enable one plugin on multiple compilers and both the server and the client of our plugin framework provide common capabilities such as integrative verification and login to users. So that will help plugin users to quickly use the excellent capability of the compiler. So let's look at the overall architecture of the, of the work. So the major feature of the Pink is the focusing model design of the plugin use, use server and the compiler client. So this design allows the logic of the plugin tools to run as an uh, independent process through the uh, plugin server. And decou and decoupling it from the specific compiler and the de developers only need to develop once based on the plugin server. And the plugin user can choose a specific uh, compiler client to use according to their own needs. And the user and the client communication communicate across uh, processor process through uh, gRPC to com transmit IR data. So let's take a closer look at the sources. Uh, on the plugin server, we provide the plugin developers with an uh, IR that is uh, decoupled from the compiler and uh, provide plugin uh, APIs to develop quickly. The framework also um, provides many common capabilities on the server side, such as multiple uh, levels of logging and uh, uh, running monitors to help the small C uh, execution of server and the client. And the communication energy is used for the course process communication and uh, makes it efficient by uh, serializing and deserializing IR data. We also have made uh, separate compiler clients for GC and LVM. Uh, this these clients uh, can be loaded uh, through the plugin system of each compiler to quickly enable plugin compatibility without uh, building the whole compiler. So in this client, uh, in addition to the same common, common uh, capabilities as the server, and the pink also provides uh, compat and capabilities verification to help verify the compiler vision and uh, provides the uh, integrated verification of uh, SHA256. So we, we also provide uh, event management can, that can help developers uh, accurately mapping the plugin, plugin uh, register positions to the, uh, the compi uh, compilation pipeline. So of course, the key capability of the client is in the translation and the conversion of uh, IR. So let's map the IR and the API of the plugin logic to the actual, actual uh, compiler and uh, release the compatibility of plugins in the specific compiler. So everyone will know that, uh, will we'll also discover that the major difficulty of our work is how to translate and convert the IR used by a uh, developer with the IR of each compiler. So in fact, once you use the IR of a specific compiler for uh, development, uh, it is actually very difficult to transplant it to uh, other compilers because the IR formats and the uh, chains of each compiler are very different. The migration cost is very high and the physicality is 
software development. Therefore, uh, we have developed uh, an IR based on uh, MAIR. It's a uh, plugin select. So development, developers can based on this IR and the uh, API and uh, cover it with the IR translation provided by our work so that it can be used on many computers. So the plugin direct is provided by our framework to, to developers and it's based on MR. So we choose MR because that is a high quality infrastructure that would benefit multiple computers. So we want to use MR's generic test uh, representations to help us quickly develop an IR for plugin development. And using MIR as an abstract uh, layer help us release the interoperability of IR in many containers. Of course, another important reason is to the MIR's convenient and fast uh, infrastructures to help us quickly and efficiently achieve conversion between IRs. So what is MIR and uh, why does it have its magic power to do these things? Uh, and uh, Grace Nitana um, published his paper on the CGO 21 and, uh, and uh, it shows uh, uh, work on MIR. MIR began with the realization that model uh, machine learning frameworks, they are uh, composed of many different competitors, so which didn't share a common infrastructure or design principles. And uh, the competitor uh, industry has the uh, same problems the, uh, so the MIR project aims to directly talk to this uh, just challenges. So by making the chip of the define and introduce a new abstraction level and provide inbox infrastructure to solve common uh, compiler engineer problems. That can reduce the cost of building domain specific compilers and aimed um, in connecting existing compilers together. So it's actually the biggest reason why we chose MIR. But some, maybe some people think that uh, MIR is used in the field of AI, but uh, however, MIR in, M M M in MIR does not refer to machine learning, but it's, it's to uh, multi-level. So we believe that using MIR in traditional um, compilers is very promising. So MIR provi providing a, a declarative system for defining IR dialects, uh, dialect design um, facility facilitate uh, expansion and the evolution. So also the MIR providing a wide range of common infrastructure. So that, is, that makes it easier to uh, complete uh, our uh, development work. So it's flexible and uh, convenient conversion with existing, uh, existing uh, dialect. So that's why we think MIR is the right fit for this project. So as we know, uh, MIR has uh, and generic text uh, um, representation, so that supports MR's extensibility. So the right fig figure shows the uh, unit of uh, semantic MR that's uh, operation. Um, everything from instruction to function to module is modeled as the uh, operation in this system. Um, in MR, um, they like for plugin frameworks. Uh, it's uh, it's the plugin direct, so we have designed many operations for sediment and types, such as the size, conditions, etc. Uh, MIR and LLVM come from the same region, so some origins. So one of our important task is to introduce GCC's uh, intermediate uh, rep representation simple and uh, into the MIR to chain. So we developed and uh, implemented the translation from GIMPO to uh, plugin select introduce function, uh, including function, uh, basic block and operation translation. Uh, on the plugin server, use P plugin then select for plugin development. So use uh, plugin select for uh, course uh, process communication to pass their data and API to the compiler. When the user uses the plugin, the plugin logic is ex executed by step by step, and the, the compiler is guided to operate the uh, IR through uh, course the process notification according to the uh, API used by the de development. 
At the same time, we can use the transition module to translate the required um, compiler error into plugin dialect and pass it to the server to execute the plugin logic. For example, on the GSC client, IR data uh, is achieved through the translation between uh, Gimple and the plugin direct on the uh, LVM client conversion is performed through the LVM direct con corresponding to LVM IR and the MIR in frame structure is used to quickly complete the translation process. So let's review the initial machine uh, mentioned it earlier. So the compilation uh, compilation would fall when the GSC version used to the compile the module was uh, even slightly uh, different from the one used to build a kernel. So this will cause plugin maintainers to spend a lot of energy maintaining the plugins for each GCC vision. But if we develop based on pink, because the plugin logic is decoupled from the uh, compiler, the plugin maintainers only needs to focus on maintaining their own plugin tools, and the plugin frameworks maintainers can support multiple versions of GC uh, based on the GC client. So the division of labor is clear, and the efficiency is higher, and the workload of uh, maintenance is also greatly reduced. Uh, next, let us look at uh, two cases. So, first case is an optimization path, which is a rewritten compare. This is an optimi uh, optimization feature of GCC for OpenOla. Um, it can using a wide data type to compare multiple elements at a at a time. So, choose the red figure, and the, the this optimization can can improve the performance of a spec item by 7%. So, and we developed this optimization for whole months for GSC. However, and if we want to enable it in LLVM, I still need uh, uh, to develop for another month. So we migrated this optimization on pink and it's only took seven days. Then the optimization is insulated from GC, and the LVM can be quickly enabled, reduce the whole maintenance cost for the developers. And uh, let, let me let us go back to the idea mentioned earlier. So we can develop a, a Neon 2 SVE tool based on or pink and uh, uh, develop it on the uh, plugin server. So use the uh, uh, respective plugin system of GC and LVM to launch the compiler uh, connect and enable the capabilities. So thanks to the design of our plugin, we don't have to modify the uh, compiler source code. So we can shorten the time need to be building, build and testing new features. The design of the plugin server and the compiler client allow us to develop plugins based on uh, plugin direct and then both GC and LVM are enabled. enabled. So at least uh, let's uh, union introduce our future plan. So we can Okay. Okay, it's my turn again. And uh, after you know about how the plugin framework, the pink works, and then we will show you our future plan. The future plan contains at least four bullets. The first one is trying to improve the coverage of IR function and the transformation utilities. You know, the IR of GCC infrastructure and the LLVM infrastructure is very huge. And currently, we try our best to cover about uh, 70 or 80 percent uh, LLVM or uh, IR capabilities of GCC, um, but there are still some we need to enhance step-by-step -step manner based on the uh, usage. This is the first thing we like to improve. The second thing is the user experience. As I said, the, for the plugin usage, at least we need the logging capability, the integrated verification, and the compatibility. Those three items we understand is very useful for the plugin as a user. But for the plugin as a developer, they might use another kind of the capability like debugging, and also if user has more requirement on the usage, we can also consider it 
add to add them into our roadmap of the future. So this is the second bullet uh, of the plugin. The third one is trying to add some plugin mechanism. So far, our plugin mechanism base, basically is focused on uh, the compiler uh, middle end. This is this kind of the mechanism are both provided by GCC infrastructure and the LLVM infrastructure. But actually, uh, the compiler has front end, has back end, and also uh, there are linking stage as very popular as the link time optimization. So we would like to extend our work to the other stage of the compilation, the whole compilation or whole source uh, binary building process in this way that we can uh, add more capabilities from end to end, but that would change the uh, current GCC infrastructure and LLVM infrastructure. So we would uh, put this uh, as our third step, and we need to align with the compiler upstream to, uh, to, to collaborate on this. And the fourth, as I said, that we need to contribute back not only uh, put this in our open OLA community, and uh, we would like to extend our work not only on current framework, but also in the uh, compiler, compiler infrastructure from end to end. So we need to collaborate with the upstream community to, together uh, to make it better in the future. So basically, those are the four items uh, I would like to uh, list here, but um, I can understand that the uh, punishment is not uh, is actually endless, and uh, we uh, would like to uh, call for more contribution from the community, and uh, we can uh, create a more uh, wonderful infrastructure for the compiler plugin because we think it's very helpful for us to the compiler um, community. At the same time, if you do not like to uh, develop compiler, uh, but you can just to use it, that's also very helpful for us to provide our uh, feedback to us and that we can improve the features step by step um, in the future. So basically those are the future plan. And maybe uh, last, uh, I will provide the more additional information, all the source code, we will, provide, uh, we will uh, put our code open source and provide some document for the user to follow and also there is a forum for you to, to discuss and uh, uh, write feedback. But also you can uh, send us email and scan the barcode to communicate with us and uh, provide your feedbacks based on your experience. We do appreciate your work and uh, your uh, suggestions. And uh, uh, as I said, the Open Ola Oslo is the, just a baby compared with the other very um, powerful community. And we are just the beginning but um, we, we would like to embrace the collaboration, embrace the innovation together to make a brilliant future together. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure, do you have any questions to ask? Yes. Uh, so you mean uh, mixing those IR transformation together or else? I'm not sure whether I can understand your, 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 your questions. Could you? Uh, I, I guess I was asking, uh, huh? you have to transform one IR to another. Yes. Oh, you mean uh, how to make sure the translation is correct, right? Okay, so uh, we, as I said that, um, we will add more debugging capabilities in the future for the user 
to understand the debugging, whether there is a uh, logical failure in the plugin itself, or there's uh, some uh, failure on the transformation itself. So far, we do it uh, in our uh, internal some tools. We using some mechanism to make sure that uh, using our uh, transformation, it works. Without our transformation, it works as well. So in this way, we can uh, compare with uh, transform the code and then transform the code to make sure it works, but really lacks a kind of the mechanism, engineering mechanism to debugging and isolate the problem between the, the plugin logic and the infrastructure itself. So this is the work we are working on in our next step. Yeah, so far we work in, in some uh, uh, comparison manner. Not very efficient, but that works. I'm not sure whether I answer your questions. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, sure. Yes, yes, yes. You mean different IR has some differences in between and uh, there is a common. And uh, so far we provide the, the common part of 80%, right? So far, uh, I put this way, we will provide 70% of the GCC IR and make sure GCC goes through at first. Then we are working on the area of VM part. The area of VM part is the community is work also working on the, the, the MRIR kind of the translation. And uh, we are try to provide the capability to make sure those kind of the inconsistency can um, develop in our uh, framework itself so that you do not need to come back to the area of EMIR and just uh, use the similar uh, capabilities provided by MRIR. Yeah, so we do it not in parallel and uh, step by step. Okay. If you have interest, maybe uh, we can communicate offline and, and uh, Exchange the and information, contact information. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if no more questions, um, that's all. Thank you for your attendance. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs>